Hello everyone, Benjamite here coming at you with another Christmas guide video. Do you want to know how to get that cute little sleigh hound for yourself so you can use it all next year to get that high prospecting drop or just to run around looking super adorable? Well, you've clicked on the right video because in this video, I'm going to show you everything you need to do to complete the Christmas stars quest, all six stars. If you could do me a huge favor and smack that like button to show your support, it would greatly help the channel out. And if you're new here and you like Dofu's PVM tips, guides, and gameplay, well, that's what my channel is all about consider hitting that subscribe button and turning on notifications so you know exactly when my videos go live all right let's do this All right, the first thing you have to do is pick up the quest. So as soon as you get here to Christmas Island, you're gonna talk to Leo and you're gonna find out more about the Christmas stars. Assure him that you understood. And there you go. You now have the Christmas stars quest. And basically what you gotta do is each one of these markers represent a star that you have to get. Some are really fast and easy to do. Others, I will show you how to do them, but you will have to complete them multiple times before you can actually get the star. So I'll show you what you gotta do, but then you will have to actually go do that over the course of you know a few days maybe to complete the quest. But we're gonna get this all squared away for you in no time. So we're gonna start at the top of this and just work our way down. And we start with the workshop star. All right, to get the workshop star, the first thing you do is you come over here to negative 3286 where the gift shop is. And you're gonna go inside here. On the right hand side, you got Vlad the Blimp Plar. You're gonna talk to him, offer to help. And he's gonna send you to go out looking for iced chestnuts. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna find 30 iced chestnuts and bring those back to him. Now, this is one of those quests that you gotta do multiple times. You gotta complete this quest seven times. So once you picked up that quest, you're gonna step outside. And if you use the Y button on your keyboard, see the presents that are lighting up here and the door, uh, the Y button on your keyboard is gonna light up anything on a map that is clickable. And that will be handy for other quests that we do as well. But what you're gonna do is these red boxes, you go over and you click it, there's gonna be a little bit of an animation while they try to unwrap the box and you're gonna see a chestnut with a one pop up right there. And that means that you found one. Now you gotta get 30 of those and sometimes it can be a little tricky remembering how many you have in your bag. So you can check your inventory, go over here to quest items. This is where you can see how many you've collected. What I like to do is I take this and put it down here on my inventory bar. That way, every time I open a box, see how she's opening a second one, just went to two. So now you don't have to try to remember where you're at or go into your inventory every time you wanna see how many you've got. Once you have 30 chestnuts, you just come back here to Vlad, turn those into him. He's gonna give you some XP, some nice commas, and then all you gotta to remember to do is to complete that seven times over the course of Christmas Island and you will have the workshop star. Okay, next up we got the three king star that's hard to say five times real fast this one's going to be a lot more involved and one thing i should point out especially since this one ultimately leads to a fight all of these christmas star quests that i'm going to show you do scale with the level of your character from 20 to 200 except for the last one, which is 25 to 150. So whatever you're at, you should be able to go through these and the challenge should be there accordingly. First thing you're gonna do is come here to negative 3188 and you're gonna talk to Kaz Paul. After you talk to him, he's going to give you the penguin launcher crate. A penguin launcher, that sounds fun. And you're gonna take this back to the blimp palator inside the Christmas workshop. All right, inside here, the blimp palator is located here, kind of on the south side. He's a little tricky to spot. You're gonna talk to him and ask him to repair the launcher. He's now going to ask you to go collect 10 replacement parts. Now these are going to be dropped by whatever goblins you are supposed to be fighting according to your level. You'll see right here that it is a loot drop, 100% chance drop as long as you have the quest active. If your character is between the levels of one and 70, you need to go fight the goblins over here in the Haven area. Between 71 and 131, you need to fight them over here. And if you're above that, you need to go fight them over there. The reason you gotta fight them in your area is because that's the only way they'll drop. If you are level 200 and you go fight them in the low level area, you won't be dropping any of them. All right, so when you fight the goblins in your area, this is what it's gonna look like, the replacement part right here. It doesn't matter if you get the challenge, it doesn't matter how big the group is, or 
your level cap or anything like that. Every one of them that's in the group will drop you a part. This might take you a little while, depending on how hard it is to find them. How many people are on this quest may make a difference too, because there could be lots of people running around here trying to fight these goblins. So plan a little bit of time for accomplishing this step of this star. If you get burned out, move on to one of the other stars and come back to this when you're ready to do some more fighting. Wow, that took some time. Oh my goodness. Okay, so that was a pretty big grind, at least for me at the higher level. Maybe at the lower levels, you can find those mobs and fight them a little easier. So here's a couple things to keep in mind. Depending on the time of day you are trying to do this, you might have a lot of other people also hunting those. Now, I found that most of the mobs that I found were at least level 800 or higher. So if you're running solo, or maybe just you and one other person, it can be really challenging to find a mob that you can handle with the, the goblin that you need in there. So one thing I was gonna suggest, and this is what worked for me, go get an Astrob Knight. These things are dirt cheap. You get one for free if you've done enough achievements. And if you've hung on to it, put that on because when you're trying to get this replacement part, there's no prospecting issue, there's no XP issue. You just wanna get the part. And the quicker you can get those, the better because then you can move on to other other things. Overcap yourself for these fights so that you can hopefully move through them pretty quickly. So that's my biggest advice for you is if you can't get a big group together, whoever is with you, each of you grab an Astrob Knight, super cheap, throw it in the group. It'll make a big difference in how quickly you can get those fights done. One other thing I wanted to point out to you, if you've managed to get one of these little Christmas Drago turkeys and you're not sure what to do with them, if you run around, you're like, how do I get rid of this stupid thing? It actually is part of another quest. Just so you know how to get rid of them, over here at the freezing emote, which is where we found Cast Paul, the actual person part of this quest that we're on, if you go talk to him, you can exchange that Drago turkey. You can exchange that Drago turkey for a Christmas log. I know it says it's a HP type item here, but what I recommend is don't use them, don't eat them, just save them up because part of that quest you have to have, you have to have like 15 of these or 30 of these or something. I can't remember because I haven't refreshed my memory on how that quest works. Anytime you get a Drago Turkey, go ahead and take it, zip over there, swap it out so that you're already accumulating those logs for when you want to get to that quest. Okay, now that we have our 10 replacement parts, we're going to back to the workshop to talk to the Goblin again and give him those parts. All right, we're back here with Blimpolator. We're going to talk to him and hand him the replacement parts. That completes that quest and leads right into the next one we got to do. Blimpolator is going to send you over here to negative 37, negative 86. He's going to send you over here to talk to Bolt Hassaw. Once you're here, you're going to talk to Bolt. Talk to him about the Penguin Launcher's ammo. Now, he's going to update the quest, and you're going to see that this says find the ammo, and you can mark them all there. Each one of these locations, there's going to be a tiny little penguin. Now, again, if you use the Y key on your keyboard, they'll light up as something clickable. But now what you got to do is run each one of these places and collect those penguin ammunition because <laughs> you're shooting penguins out of your launcher. So that's what you got to do next. All right, once you have collected all eight ammo, now we're going to go back and talk to Bolt again. All right, once we're here, talk to Bolt, hand over the ammo. Now, for this next step, we're going to go back to the workshop, and we're going to be making some breaded fish liver oil. Now, to do that, you need to have 50 breaded fish. Once you've got your 50 fish, you want to head over there to the Christmas workshop again. All right, only on this point in the quest can you click the Y button, and you will see the fish press is now usable. So you're going to click on that. It's behind my little picture here, but as long as you've got 50 breaded fish on you, you're going to click that, put them over here and you're gonna combine that. And because it is a quest item, it's not gonna show up here. But if you back out, open up your inventory and go over here, there it is. You got your breaded fish liver oil. Doesn't that sound delicious? All right, now we're gonna go back to Bolt and give him the liver oil. All right, here at Bolt, we're gonna hand him the breaded fish liver oil. And that completes that quest and leads into the third and final step of this quest for the star. All right, here we are at the third part needed for this star. Now, before you move on to the next step, just know that this leads right into a fight. So make sure you're prepared before you do this step. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna talk to Mel Chow and you're gonna announce that Leo Anthem has escaped. Now, right here is where run away. If you're not ready and you don't wanna do the fight yet, click that. But if you're ready for the fight, click protect the three kings. <laughs> the three kings. 
Before I start this fight though, I'm gonna give you a couple pointers you should know up front. What's gonna happen is you're gonna start a fight against a Fekka that is named Leo. It's kind of unusual. He starts out completely invulnerable at first. You can't actually attack him and you won't be able to for a few turns. What happens is when you start the fight, there is just you and Mel Chow is going to be there and you need his other two buddies, his other two Wabbit Kings to show up before he will become vulnerable. The goal of this is one, you need to outlast the enemy and two, you got to protect the Wabbits because the Wabbits are what are going to make him vulnerable so that you can attack, but they show up over time. They're not there right away. So if you've done this fight before and you're like, what's going on? I can't hit this guy. I can't hurt that guy. It's because you got to wait a little bit for the other Wabbits to show up. The other two Wabbits count more as summons. So if one of them get killed, as long as you can stay alive, they will get re-summoned and you can continue the fight. If the main Wabbit dies though, that ruins the fight and you or you lose the fight so if you're on the shadow server make sure you know what you're doing here before you go in there to try to do that uh, you might die not because you ran out of life but because your wabbit died once all the wabbits have arrived the third one has a spell that it can cast on leo to make him vulnerable and then it's a matter of just trying to blitz him the third wabbit needs to cast that every turn because he'll become invulnerable again after every turn so you got to try to hold him but yet let the wabbits get kind of close to him so that they can cast that on them but yet still keep them away so that they're safe it might take you a couple tries to figure it out but you can heal the wabbits and things like that so if their life is getting low and you got the capabilities of healing use that also blocking line of sight is a fantastic way now you don't control the wabbits so they'll run around all over the place but if you got ways of trying to block line of sight from leo to them that's a way of keeping them alive as well all right, so let's do this and I will show you what the fight looks like. All right, so here's Leo and he has very long ranged attack. It, it doesn't really matter that he's all the way down there and we're up here, uh, he can still get to us. So we're just gonna start this. There you can see he is, he's made himself invulnerable and he will usually prioritize attacking you over the Wabbit. But what typically happens is he will attack you, then he will try to attack this Wabbit specifically. So we're gonna use this just to transfer some life to him to try to heal him back up. And now it's a, it's all about trying to outlast him and block him, corner him. Anything you can think of, summons that you got are very useful here. I have found that actually summoning classes tend to do much better here because you can really corner him. So that's going to be the goal here. All right, he's there's the first turn there. Now the Wabbits do do things to try to help you. One thing that they do is they cast a, a resistance buff on you to try to make you strong against his element. Okay, I'm gonna scoot up. I really wanted to put the, the skeleton here in front. All right, we're gonna bring this to this side here. <laughs> he's probably gonna go around it. Okay, all the attacks were on the sword, that's perfect. All right, we're gonna come over here. We're gonna cast the skeleton here to hopefully, again, we're trying to just keep him cornered. When he does summon the next Wabbit, you're gonna see that I get healed from that as well. I believe it heals all the allies on the map. Okay, so that's three turns. This next turn, I believe, is when the first Wabbit will typically arrive. It's not, it's not an always thing. So let's do this. All right, he gave me some MP. Here we go, Wabbit number two. See, I got some health back. All right, see, he's a summon there. Okay, the sword died. Luckily, I've got my next one ready here. So I'm gonna put that out there. In fact, I could be doing this so I can try to work up a shield to put on every once in a while. And the Wabbits are doing good. Again, it's, it's mainly all about trying to outlast him. Anything you can do to just hold him there, hold him there. That's what you wanna do. Okay, pass again. If you got him set up in a situation like this, just keep passing. That just speeds the fight along and it doesn't really do you any, there's no benefit into trying to figure out what else to do, unless you got like some buffs and stuff that you, you have that could be useful. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and put the shield on because I think we're getting close to the third Wabbit getting here. Go ahead and buff up what I can. Sword right there. Is your buddy showing up yet? There he is. And see, I got some health back again. 
Now we gotta try to make it to where this wabbit has line of sight on him. This is where it can get a little tricky. So what I'm gonna do is swap here, swap here, and I'm gonna go to the other side. <laughs> I don't know why it ran around. I'm gonna go on the other side of him here so that hopefully he has line of sight now to be able to cast. We'll just put this right here because maybe he'll attack that instead of the wabbit. One, two, Oh, I didn't do it yet. Yeah, he doesn't cast it right away. I think usually it's one or two turns after that that he will cast it. It's like, come on, just make him vulnerable already. Okay, we're gonna do this. All right. I think I think we'll be in business after this turn. Wabbit two. Come on, Wabbit three, do your thing. There we go. All right, now he's attackable. Oh my goodness, he does not like the fact that that wabbit's there. Do this. Again, now it's just about killing him as fast as you can. All right, Skeletor, you've got a hit in there. All right. Sweet, they did it again. Oof, he's chasing the wabbit down. See, he goes after the main wabbit. He, will, he doesn't usually go after these. All right, let's pull you back. Swap. Go try and keep you over here. All right. Hopefully, I think I don't think they have to be straight in the line. I think they can do it from an angle also. So hopefully, uh, they'll still make him vulnerable from an angle. Oh yeah. There we go. Cool. So it doesn't have to be a linear attack for that to work. See, he's going all out after that wabbit now, trying to finish him off. But I think I think we've sealed the deal here. Oh yeah, he's done for. Okay, there's the fight. So that's kind of what you have to expect. Remember, he's going to be completely invulnerable. You gotta try to keep that main wabbit alive. Give him health if you can. Throw summons around Leo to try to block him if you can. Then once he becomes vulnerable, once the third wabbit arrives, usually one or two turns afterwards is when they'll start casting it. Then you just wanna blitz him as quickly as you can. But once that's done, you're gonna to talk to Mel Chow, ask what's gonna to happen to Leo, and there you go. That finishes the Three Kings Star. There it is, with the little wabbit on it. All right, the next star on our list is the Itzing Star. And believe it or not, all you gotta do is come here to negative 32, negative 89, and run the Christmas Dungeon. It's the low level one, fairly easy unless you also are low level it might be a little more challenging but all you gotta do is beat it doesn't matter if you get any challenges or nothing just beat the dungeon you get that star all right just beat itzing right here quest updated the itzing star and the only thing you gotta do is talk to hector christmas right here take the star and leave and there you go <laughs> All right, the Jokey Goblin Star. All right, this one's gonna take a little bit of time, but the nice thing is I don't think there's much of a time barrier. Like you don't have to wait 12 hours before you can repeat it. You can do this back to back if you'd like. However, it takes a bit of work. What's gonna happen is you're gonna come here to negative 29, negative 86, and you're gonna find this Blimpident. When you find Blimpident, you're gonna talk to him and he's going to have you play a, a staff planting game. What this game is, is you're gonna run a lap around Christmas Island, and you're gonna to try to find two of his buddies, plant a staff, and then come back and find where he has moved to. And I say moved to, because once you get done talking with him, and you leave this screen, he's going to move to a new location. It might be the same location. In fact, let me bring up a map. Here's a map kind of showing you the locations of where these guys are typically found. First one you have to go to is the one down here on the south, the red squares. Then you wanna come up here and find wherever he is up here, then you're gonna come back here. Now right here is where we are located at the moment. So when you make your circle, he might be still here on this map, but he could be in any of these locations. So what you gotta do is you gotta find his two buddies, then come back and find him. All three places you're gonna plant a staff and you have to do it in less than seven minutes. If you don't do it in less than seven minutes, you won't get the point. Also, you have to do them in that order. You gotta go to the south first, then the north, 
then back over here. If you go in the opposite direction, you will find the goblins, but it will not let you plant the staff. They'll just say something silly to you. One other thing I'll point out is while you're running around, you might spot some little NPC ghost type characters. If you see them, click on them and talk to them real quickly, and they're gonna give you blue oranges. Those blue oranges, when you bring them back to the final guy here, he will exchange those for extra Christmas gifts as a reward for you. So if you spot them, you might talk to them, pick them up. If you don't, it's not a big deal. That doesn't move this along. Now I mentioned a moment ago, you have to get 20 points. You can play this game 20 times to get those. If you are sick and tired of this game, I would not blame you by the time you get to that point. Later, when I show you the steps for the Grumpy Star, you have to go fight some enemies. And when you fight those enemies, they have a chance to drop a point as well. Now it's not a guaranteed point, but it is another option for you. Also, you have to have done this one at least once before the points have the possibility of dropping from those other enemies. So you gotta play this game at least once so that then you can maybe get the points to drop when you go fight those other enemies. All right, so now if you check your inventory, you will see the beside the point, and I have one. You need 20 of those to get past this step. Once you have 20, you're gonna come back here, talk to Blimpudent again, and he will give you that star. All right, the Dungeon Star. It actually takes place off of Christmas Island. To get here, you're going to come here to the negative two zero Amakna Village Zap, and you're just gonna run straight across until you get to the Elio Portal position. Once you're here, you're gonna find Harry Christmas. Talk to him. You're gonna ask what the matter is. Offer to help. And he's gonna send you on a quest to go get your Dungeon Star. All right, and he's gonna give you the quest, Christmas Preparations. What he's going to do is assign you a dungeon based upon your level. If you're between the levels of 20 and 80, he's gonna send you to the Scarleaf Dungeon. 81 and 140, he's gonna send you to Dragon Pig. And if you're above 140, he's gonna send you to the Soft Oak Clearing. And basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna go beat that dungeon, and when you beat the boss, you're gonna get a small package of gifts. You're gonna bring that back to Harry Christmas and exchange it with him, and he's gonna give you some XP, I think some commas, and maybe even some Christmas gifts there. One of the nice things about this, though, is you can actually increase your rewards. If you go and defeat the dungeon just completely as normal, you're gonna get a small Christmas box gift. If you put on at least one piece from the Father Christmas set, either the hat or the cape, it doesn't matter which, as long as you fight the boss and defeat the boss while wearing one of those pieces, you'll be bumped up to a medium size. If you beat the boss with both of those on, you get the large size. Once you've done it three times, when you talk to Harry Christmas, at that point, he will give you the Dungeon Star. All right, now it's time for that final star, the Grumpy Star. Now this one can be a bit of a project and there is a bit of questing you gotta do to get there, but don't worry, I'm gonna break it all down for you and I'm gonna break it down depending on the level and who it is you have to go after. To start this quest, you're gonna talk to Scooger right here outside of the Christmas workshop and you're going to ask to teach a grump a lesson. You got four different ones here. Ultimately, what you're going to do is whoever it is that is in your level requirement, you need to defeat them seven times because you're gonna drop a bag of loot that you bring back to Scooger. That's how you get the stars, you bring him seven bags of loot. Now, you can fight all four of these because they have resources that you can get and some things that you can exchange here with Scooger that you, you won't be able to get otherwise. So there's purpose to fighting all of them, especially if you wanna get the achievements where you gotta fight at least each one one time. So you will possibly want to do all four of these. But I'm gonna walk you through how to access all four areas because you can't just walk right into their lairs. You have to do some steps to get there, but you need to know which one it is that you have to do. The, the others are voluntary, but there's one that you have to do if you wanna get the star. If you are between levels 1 and 80, the blimp wristed, the shivery, is the person you need to fight. 81 to 109, you're, you're going to go after Redolf the Red Nose. 110 to 139, it's going to be Rotchelf. And then everybody 140 and up, it's going to be Oogie Betty. So we're going to start at the bottom level and work our way up. So the first one is blimp wristed. So you select blimp wristed, go and confront him. 
All right, once you have selected him, you're gonna come over here to negative 28, negative 88, and that's where his entrance is. Once you come here, again, if you click on the door, it's not gonna let you in. It says that you haven't completed the item yet. What you gotta do first is click the sign. Down here at the bottom, you're gonna select find a way into the cave. And this starts the quest, but why is he so mean? Now we need to head inside the toy room inside the Christmas Fork Shop. All right, inside the toy room, you're gonna talk to Blimp Bromp 2. Ask him how he knows the Blimpster. Now we're going to step back one room and talk to Blimpolator. All right, that updates the quest, and Blimpolator is going to ask you to find five frozen prickly needles. And while you're on this quest, they have a 100% drop rate from the pricklies that are going to be right outside in this low level area. So the first thing you got to do, go fight a bunch of those, get five of these, then we're going to come back to Blimpolator. All right, now that we got our five needles, we're going to talk to Blimpolator and hand over the frozen needles. Now that completes this quest, but you're gonna to offer to help to find the notebook, which is now going to start the quest, Zayam to the Slaughter. Now from here, we are actually going to leave Christmas Island, and we're gonna go down here to the Rogue Secret Passage just on the south side of Astrid. All right, once you're at the church, you're gonna to talk to the Astrubian mercenary, find out why it's off limits, and you're gonna pay him 50 commas to get in. Once you're in here, you're gonna come over here to Ba Papa, and you're gonna mention Zam's name. Offer 10 commas, but ultimately you have to offer 101 commas. He ain't cheap. Okay, after you've talked to him, you're gonna have to come down here to two negative one, the Amakna Inn, to progress the quest. Once you're here, you're gonna go inside this main building. You're gonna take the door over here on the right. Go up these stairs on the far right. And once you're here, here is Zambono. Now talking to Zambono will lead into a fight, just so you know. You're gonna demand that he returns the stolen notebook. And here you go. Level 125, 270 health, not too big of a fight. Once the fight is over, you're going to get the notebook, which you're going to take back to Blimpinator inside the Christmas workshop. All right, once you're here, going to talk to Blimpinator, hand over the notebook. That completes Zlam to the Slaughter. Now we enter into the final quest to gain access. And he's going to tell you to talk to Vlad Blimpilar, which is right behind him. Ask for a spanner, and you want to select a spanner of 12. He's gonna ask if you wanna change your mind. You say no, you want the spanner at 12. Now it's pretty easy to figure out what you gotta click on. If you use the Y button, you're gonna click the little gear down here in the bottom right hand corner, and you're gonna do three of these. So you can click that one there, go inside the toy workshop, click the machine here, and the machine here. Now we go back outside and talk to Blimpolator again. Tell him that you finished, and that finishes the key of success. Say thank you and leave. Now you have the adjustable hooklet, which is what you need to be able to get into Blimp Wristed's cave. So now we gotta head back up there and click on the door. Once you're here, just click on the door and there you go. You now have access to Blimp Wristed's cave. All right, and after you have beat Blimpster, you're going to come down here, talk to Scooger and declare that you have finished your task. And there you go. You have now beat the Blimpster quest, smile like you meanie. <laughs> All right, now I'm gonna walk you through the process of how to access where Reldoff is hiding. First, you're gonna to talk to Scooger and you're going to request Reldoff the Red Nose. For Reldoff, you're gonna come up here to negative 33, negative 91. And once you're here, gonna click on the sign and find a way in. Now this starts the quest, all roads lead to rum. Now one thing you need to know real quick is to do this quest line, you do need to have access to Moon Island. And I do have a two minute quick tip video on my channel that will walk you through the process super easy on how to get to Moon Island if you haven't been there before. I will try to remember to link it in the description below as well. Maybe even in one of these corners, have one of those little pop out cards and you can click on that, do the process to get to Moon Island and then come back here and pick up where you left off. The first thing you have to do for all roads lead to rum, you gotta go talk to Nicholas Christmas inside the Christmas workshop. All right, once you're in here, you're gonna talk to Nicholas and you're gonna say to jostle Red off a bit. He's now going to send you down here to the Madstrom Harbor at 13 comma one. And we're looking for sugar cane, <laughs> sugar cane. <laughs> All right, here's sugar cane kind of over here in the top right corner. You're gonna to talk to her. You're going to explain that Raldoff's bad reputation may have serious consequences and agree to help in exchange for a key. Now we gotta to head to Moon Island. All right, on Moon Island, you're gonna come over here to 3311 and you're gonna to talk to Michelle Winner and she's going to send you to go find Chris Torrent. 
Chris is going to be located up here at 33 comma 6 and this is going to lead into a fight. Chris is this SRAM up here in the top right corner and just so you know he is a SRAM and will disappear for the first couple turns of the fight. So just keep that in mind if you are a class that's maybe close to the level cap and you struggle with things that turn invisible. He's got 930 health so not too crazy but just know he is going to be invisible just like that. <laughs> <laughs> Once the fight is over, you're going to get this keg of old rum. We're going to take this back to Michelle of the winner. Okay, once we're here, we're going to talk to the winner, show her the keg. Now that completes the all roads lead to rum, and this leads into the quest Return of the Jetty. Once we're done talking to her, we're going to head back and talk to Sugar Cane. Once you get here, you will see that Sugar is gone, but you're going to click on this little crate right here, and that's going to give you a letter. From there, we're going to come up to 11 negative stick and talk to Spike Ezzy. All right, here's Spike Ezzy gonna talk to him and take revenge this leads into a fight with a level 80 990 HP again not too bad once you defeated Izzy you're gonna get this letter from sugar cane and we're gonna take this back to docker who's located right there at the docks where you get off at Christmas Island all right once we're back here we're gonna talk to docker show him the letter and that concludes Return of the Jetty quest. You're going to go off and chase some snowballs, and this leads into the final quest to getting access to Reldolf's area. What shall we do with a drunken sailor? <laughs> Any Dwight fans from the office? <laughs> All right, what you have to go do now is find three frozen snowball stones, which are dropped at a 50% drop rate. That's their base drop rate from the snowballs located in the Christmas land area. Once you have three of those, we're going to bring them back to Docker. All right, now that we got our three snowball stones, we're going to talk to Docker again, hand him the stones, hand over the keg, thank him and leave. Now we're going to head back up to Radolf Stables and we should be able to go inside now. All right, here we are back at negative 33, negative 91. Click on the door. And there you go, you now have access to Redoff. Now all you have to do is defeat him, go back and talk to Scooger again at the Christmas shop, and you've completed this quest. All right, two down, two to go. Boy, there's a lot involved in trying to get to all of these guys, but it's gonna be worth it. The next one on our list is Roachelf. Gonna talk to Scooger, and you want to go after Roachelf. All right, now that we've arrived at negative 37, negative 87, this is Rochelf's loft. We're gonna click the sign and find a way to get into the attic. Now this starts the quest Bop a Roach. Now we need to head back and talk to Scooger, who we just left a moment ago outside the Christmas workshop. Once you're here, you're gonna talk to Scooger and let him know that the loft is locked. Now he's gonna send you to a few places to click on some items. You're trying to find a diary. We're gonna come up here to negative 35, 89 for the first clue. All right, here at negative five, negative 89, this little Christmas tree in the back, we're gonna click that. Now we go up one. We're gonna click this fence post right here on the left side. Now we go left one, and we're gonna click this little blue present. Now that we found the diary, we need to go back to Scooger and show it to him. You're gonna show Scooger the diary, and you're going to head off to tickle some Yetis. <laughs> If we look here underneath the abominable snow yeti, you'll see these five pages and they're numbered 15, 18, 3, 17, and 6. What you have to do is go fight these yetis and drop one of each of these pages. Again, it's got a 50% base drop rate and you got to have at least one of each of these. Now, important note before you zip off and start fighting those, when you fight one, and you drop one, you need to go into your quest inventory and double click it to open up the page. Once you've opened the page, that will move the quest along. So if you drop all five pages and the quest isn't moving, it's because you haven't opened those and looked at them. So now what you gotta do is go up there, fight a bunch of yetis, drop those five pages, open them up, and then after that, you're gonna go talk to Docker right over there at the docks. Okay, boy, that took a little while. Uh, one thing I'll point out to you, the abominable snow yeti, it is in between between two areas. If you look at the hourglass right here, you'll see that you can use, you can look in the lower and the upper area. Now I fought in the upper area to see if maybe that would increase my drops, but it didn't. It had no effect on how quickly I dropped things. So what I recommend, stay in this lower area, put on as many idols as you can and try to get the challenges. All right, now that we have all five pages, we're gonna come over here to negative 3084, we're gonna talk to Docker and we're gonna slip him 500 commas. 
and that completes that step of the quest. Now we enter into the final phase of the steps to get to the rot shelf loft. I don't think I said this in the beginning of this quest and I apologize, but to progress this one, you need to have access to Otomai Island. And go figure, I've got a two minute quick tip guide as well to get you into there. Once you can get to Otomai Island, you're gonna come up here to negative four, nine, and we're gonna talk to Dr. Nirad. All right, here we are, negative 49.9. We're gonna talk to the doctor and we're gonna ask about the story. Show him the diary from Christmas Island. Once you've answered all of his responses and passed over the diary pages, now we're gonna go inside the cave. We're gonna go up one map and we're gonna go into this little room here on the left-hand side. All right, using our Y button, this little crate right here, we're gonna click that. And that's gonna lead into a fight which I totally forgot and just started it with all four characters. <laughs> all right, once you beat him, not too difficult. He's got a decent amount of health, but other than doing some pushback and running and hiding, he's not too difficult. You now have the key. Now we're gonna go back to Rochelle's loft and go inside. All right, here we go. Negative 3787, go inside. And there we go. You can now fight Rochelf, and then after you beat him, like the others, go back and talk to Scooger, and you will complete this quest. All right, just a couple pointers real quick on fighting this guy. Just beat him with all four characters. Basically, what you have to do is you have to kind of rotate through your elements. Each time you hit him with your spell, whatever element that is, he's going to begin to build resistance to that. So you have to use other elements to begin to lower the one that you want to hit in and raise the ones that you don't want to be hitting in. So what I recommend doing is whatever your main element is, hit him first with a couple low AP attacks that are off element and then hit him real big with your main element at the end. I feel like that's the best way to get the most damage out of that. All right, three down, one to go. Now I'm gonna show you how to get to Oogie Betty's Sanctuary. Of course, it starts right here with Scooger. You're gonna talk to him, select Oogie Betty from the list, and there we go. Once you talk to Scooger, you're gonna come over here to negative 35, negative 89, and click on the sign up there. All right, here we are, negative 35, 89. We're gonna click on this sign, find a way into the sanctuary. Now this starts the quest, Breaking the Ice. Now I will let you know that you have to have access to Pandala Island in order to complete this quest line. If you don't know how to get there yet, I have a two minute quick tip video on how to get you there. I'll link it in the description below. Try to put a flashcard up here, assuming I do not forget. I apologize in advance if I do, but you do need to be able to get to Pandala to move forward in this quest. Now, the first thing we have to do is go find Carol. Carol is located right down here at negative 33, negative 86. Once you're here, you're gonna talk to Carol Christmas and declare that you would like to have a chat with Oogie. Now we're gonna head over and talk to Docker over there at the docks. Once you're here, you're gonna talk to Docker and you're gonna hand over a thousand commas. And we're gonna be looking for Adriani, who's located right here at 22, negative 28. All right, here we are, 22, negative 28. You're gonna accept. And now she's gonna send you to the dojo. All right, the dojo is here at 20, negative 31. You're gonna go inside and you're gonna talk to this little boxing looking dude over here, Blimpoa. Say that you were sent and get ready for a fight. Now, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the old game Street Fighter, but if you remember Ken and Ryu, this guy fights, attacks, and even makes sounds very similar to those characters from Street Fighter, which is really cool if you haven't seen it before. Once the fight is over, you're gonna to talk to Blimpoa again, ask if he enjoyed the session, and now we're gonna go back and see Andrea again. All right, here we are, back to talk to Adriana. Announce that we finished the training, and sigh and ask what the ingredients will be needed. Now she's going to send you to go get seven Ice Crackler Ice Cubes and three White Slayhound Fangs. The uh, Ice Cubes are obviously dropped by the Ice Cracklers, and the fangs are dropped by the nefarious goblins. So this might take you a bit of a grind, get you a good group together, put on some sidekicks if you need some help. If you can manage it, throw some idols on there, get that prospecting as high as possible and go get those ingredients up on Christmas Island. Okay, there we are. I got the drops. Boy, that was a bit of a trek, but we got our seven ice cubes and our three fangs. We are back now to talk to Adrian again. You're gonna hand over the ingredients. And of course you're gonna to offer to help because you're so helpful. <laughs> All right, this is gonna lead into the quest, Go With The Flow. And basically we're gonna run around Pandala hitting up some barrels. 
Okay, the first one you're gonna click on is actually these three barrels right here. And if you see, they're lighting up. However, there seems to be a little bit of a glitch. I'll show you on this other account. Right now, if I push the Y button, they're not lighting up. And the only way I've found to get around that is by going off the map. And when you come back on, now they're lighting up. So there's a little bit of a glitch there apparently that they are not just activating as soon as the quest does. So just do that real quick, run off the map, run back on, and you can click on the first set of barrels, which is gonna be this one right here. Next, we're gonna go up, up one and to the right to 23, negative 29. And you're gonna spot these three barrels right back here behind the table. Click that one. Now we're, the next two places we're gonna go is straight along this line. We're gonna go right over here to where the zap's located. And then the last one will be two to the left from there at 18, negative 29. All right, here at 20, negative 29, you're gonna see this little set of barrels right behind the tree. You wanna click that one. And here at 18, negative 29, the last one is gonna be these two barrels you see up here right behind those fireworks. Now that we've collected from all the barrels, we're gonna go back and talk to Andrea and again. Say that we've emptied the flasks and thank her. And now we have Oogie Betty's Ice Sanctuary Key. Now we can head back up there and try to enter her sanctuary. Now that we are here, back at Oogie Betty, we're gonna click on the door, and there we go. Oh my goodness, there she is, Oogie Betty. <laughs> oh man, that looks like the roach elf from the previous room. All right, well, I'm gonna fight this character real quick, see if I could come up with any tips for you after the fight. All right, I just beat him with all four characters on the first try, and I can say that it's not that difficult. Just keep trying to chip away at Oogie. Uh, I will let you know that any summons that you throw out there, if it's not something that is done right after the turn you use it, for example, on the Sadita, the sacrificial doll, as soon as I throw it out there, if it runs up and blows up, it's okay. Anything that stays on the map though, Oogie will immediately turn it into like this little beetle guy. It doesn't really have any health or anything. You can destroy it super easy, but any summons you throw out there are almost pointless. So just be aware of that. Other than that, pretty straightforward. All right, so now we're going to go back down and talk to Scooger to turn in this quest. All right, so here's Scooger. Going to talk to him. Declare the task is finished. There we go. We've now finished all four of the Christmas layers. Now you got to do is make sure you get that loot bag seven times and you'll get that grumpy star. All right, I know that was a lot. There was a bunch of steps and there was a great deal of effort that went into making this video. If you wouldn't mind and do me a huge favor, if you haven't already and smack that like button, it would really help the channel out and I would totally appreciate it. Also, if you like Dofus PVM tips, guides, and gameplay, well, that's what my channel is all about. Consider hitting that subscribe button and turning on notifications so you know exactly when my videos go live. All right, you guys all have a Merry Christmas, and until next time, you all be safe out there, and I will see you on the next one.